Rent is going up and up in the United States. The median rent in the U.S. is now over $2,000 for the first time, according to the People's Action Home Guarantee. The organization says rent is a driving factor in inflation, which is rising faster than it has in over 35 years. Minimum wage workers in New York City need to work over 100 hours a week to afford rent, according to CNBC News. The People's Action Home Guarantee is working to fight high rent in the United States, and campaign director at the People's Action Homes Guarantee, Tara Raghavir, joins us now to weigh in. Welcome, Tara. Thanks, Brianna. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about what's driving this crisis? Sure. So one important thing we need to understand is that rent inflation is nothing new. Actually, for the better part of the last decade, rents have been going up and up. Landlords are charging rents not based on the quality or condition of the home, but based on whatever the market will allow. The root of this crisis is that the federal government has all but abdicated its responsibility to provide our homes and turned that responsibility over to the private market and then not regulated that market enough, especially in the last decade since the last financial crisis. Now that market is a sort of Wild West scenario where profiteers are extracting more and more wealth from everyday people and folks just don't uh, don't uh, have the means to make it work. The rent is too damn high across the country. And as you said, rent is a core factor driving overall inflation. Mm. My um, understanding is that this is primarily caused by a lack of availability, housing availability that could be solved by getting rid of zoning restrictions that make it very difficult to build out the density in um, areas uh, a lot of people want to live, um, you know, how, difficult to build new high rises, um, you know, single family occupancy unit, unit requirements that are always, uh, that, that many people in the neighborhoods, you know, want to keep in place, but should absolutely be gotten rid of for the good of like humanity. Um, is, is, that, uh, is that your perspective as well? There's absolutely a shortage of truly affordable supply in the American housing market. And we disagree with supply as the only response and especially the urgent response to this crisis. It's consistently the only thing that we're hearing from the president and his economic advisors. We just need to build more. But there's a couple issues with that argument. First of all, we can't rely on the private sector to solve a problem of its own making, right? That sector depends on driving for their profits. They're not gonna reduce the rents because there is, um, or automatically because there's more supply in the market. And in a highly speculative housing market, more supply doesn't necessarily mean lower costs. And then finally, the argument that we've been making with the president and his team these days is that increasing supply and you know passing policy or instituting measures that push for more supply uh, now may impact the market in five plus years, but that really doesn't do anything to alleviate the pain that people are in today when the rent is too damn high across the country and people can't make their bills at the end of a month. So what kind of solutions are you proposing? So we've put out a call for a set of federal actions. We think the president needs to sign an executive action that directs the Federal Housing Finance Agency, FHFA, to regulate all government-backed properties and say, you know what, if you're receiving public financing or subsidy, you can't raise the rent more than 3% in a given year, right? We also need FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, to be investigating um, unreasonable rent hikes Recently, there was a blockbuster ProPublica investigation that revealed that there are algorithms and softwares that corporate and institutional investors are using to set rental rates across the country, and that's been a core driver of rent inflation. We need FTC and the Congress to be investing th investigating those types of technologies and actually regulating that practice in the market. Ultimately, we need a National Tenants Bill of Rights and we need the federal government to commit to providing homes that are off of the market and not available for speculation. But it's those urgent solutions that we need the president to take action on in order to alleviate the crisis that people are, uh, that people are feeling today. Well, a report from the real estate company Redfin shows the number of homes sold fell by 25 percent and new listings dropped by 22 percent last month. It's interesting to note that according to Redfin, economic researcher, the U.S. housing market is at a standstill, but, quote, the driving forces are completely different from those that triggered the standstill at the start um, of the pandemic. And we have had some guests on recently 
who are predicting that um, uh, housing prices are going to collapse, which would be you know, bad for people who own homes currently, but could actually be good news for people looking to buy. Um, how would that impact the rent situation? Well, the first thing that we need to discuss is the Fed's activities recently. You know, before we started taping, we were talking about whether or not it's better to just buy these days because the rents have gotten so high across the country. The reality is the activity that the Fed is taking right now by hiking interest rates is actually making the problem even worse in the short term, right? It's forcing would-be home buyers to remain renters, which is putting even more pressure on the existing crisis in the rental market. Now, in a world of recession, if the mortgage market bottoms out, then we have another crisis that looks a lot more similar to the one that we had 10 years ago, where the most vulnerable people in the market are also the people who fall through those cracks and are hurt the most. That's poor and working class tenants and, poor, and working class homeowners as well. So the issue is that even if home prices come down somewhat or even significantly, if people can't uh, afford the, the loans, the, basically the high interest loans that are required to buy any kind of property, that they're going to still be forced to remain renters? That's right. Okay. Yeah, it, there's a lot of interesting dynamics at play. It does seem like, I mean, I take, Robbie, your point. You're often bringing up the extent to which uh, zoning uh, restrictions and a lack of supply are an issue. I also hear people Townies. saying. <laughs> the, the Yemis, yeah. I, and I also hear people saying, you know, that we have a supply chain crisis. There are the reason why new construction is very expensive. Now there's the question of why there's so many empty units. There, there's a lot going on here, and we really appreciate you joining us to discuss it today. So thank you. Thank you. Stick around, we'll have more rising for you right after this.